Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 14 of my Iron Man inspired Hulkbuster build. So last time we took the suit for a bit of a short test drive, only in this room, um, and we had some restrictions because of the ceiling height. But essentially it was the first time I've walked around in it with the arms attached, which seemed to work out okay. Um, then we started the shoulder bells. So these are made of foam, and then there are some other foam PVC sections which fit over the top of them. And we formed these up with heat. The foam PVC was baked in the oven and the other foam pieces were heated with a hot air gun and formed over a large hemisphere. And today I'm going to go into painting and sealing them and also doing the 3D printed detail features and hopefully fitting them on. All right, so we're going to seal this up and paint it. Uh, yes, for anyone wondering, this is the famous dining room table. So I previously did a video on plastic coating, uh, plastazote foam and polystyrene by priming with PVA and then using smooth on polyurethane thinly brushed all over, which is what this piece is. I'm not going to use that process for these pieces. One, because of the weight, although it isn't very much, but the pieces are quite big and there are going to be lots more of them. Um, and secondly, I haven't got any polyurethane and I don't really want the mess. Um, but a few people have asked me how this has been. Um, basically, this piece is the only sample I've ever done. Although a few people over at the Replica Prop Forum have actually used this for whole Iron Man suits. Um, you'll notice there's a slight chip on there where the paint has chipped off. But in fact, the uh, plastic has remained on there and um, seems to still be stuck on quite well. And this has been around. A few people have handled it, been to a few shows. Um, it's still in one piece. Uh, but the process we're going to use today is priming the foam with PVA. So this is plastazote foam, and if we look closely at the surface, you can see it's got a slight texture. Um, some foam you can buy, um, some EVA foam is perfectly smooth, in which case you probably don't need to prime it with PVA. The PVA soaks in a little bit to this foam and helps make it a bit more rigid as well, um, and gives it a nice glossy finish, but ultimately it makes the surface finish better. After that we're going to use Plasti Dip, which is a spray-on rubber product. Um, and we're going to be very careful with that because basically it's quite toxic in its liquid form so you should wear a respirator, an actual proper respirator with filters um, not a dust mask I should point out um, and after that we can go ahead and prime it with uh, standard primer and the Arizona Gold which is what I'm painting all the gold parts of the suit in and these are standard paints from Halfords in the UK so let's get some of that PVA into a small pot and I'm just going to brush it on all over now I've put some cardboard on the bottom of these so that I can hold it while I brush it and I can also put them down without them sticking to the newspaper. So I've just got my PVA in a pot and I'm just brushing this on all over. Uh, PVA goes on white but it actually dries clear which is how you know when the first coat is done. So we're just going to try and work that into all the holes. Um, it's going to take about three coats and if I don't brush it on too thick hopefully it won't be uh, more than a couple of hours drying time between each one. So I'm just going to continue doing that. The other thing I'm going to do is actually go all the way around the edge and do a little bit on the inside so that the um, edge of the seal is actually underneath the piece and not on the inside and not on the outside um, and that still gives us foam which we can glue to so we don't glue to paint which will peel off we can actually glue to the foam um, to attach these pieces but the seal goes all the way around the edge so that's quite important. Right so there's one all done with PVA we just need to let that dry and then come back and do about another two coats and do the other one. So those have both been painted up with about three coats of PVA. You can see they've got a nice shine to them now that they didn't have before. That's given me a nice smooth surface to paint on. So first of all, I'm gonna seal those up with Plasti Dip, a couple of coats of that, not forgetting the respirator, of course. And then we can just paint them with normal auto primer and the uh, gold paint. So I've already done the red, primer and the top coat on these parts which are going to fit somewhere there so taking shape let's get these painted up okay so here are my parts painted up and mounted well not quite so the basic plan is there's going to be a block of foam in here stuck to quite a large surface area to space those parts out a bit um, i'm going to have the 3d printed detail in there maybe at the bottom although i might come back to that possibly here and here where these sort of hex shapes are uh, for now we're just going to put one in here that looks like a big bolt where the thing's attached. And also need to make some 3D printed mountings to mount onto the stick that I made a couple of episodes ago. So let's have a look at those. In fact you can hear them being printed already in the background. So here's our first 3D printed part which is a sort of hex bolt thing which is going to go in between the two raised features on the shoulder. Um, and this, um, as I mentioned, looks a bit like a 
kind of thing that holds the whole shoulder bell on. It's quite a big bolt. It's about 80 millimeters across. So that's the first part. We're going to print a pair of those. And the second part is possibly the most uninteresting part that I've printed to date, which is just these flat sections. And these are going to go onto the existing brackets I put on my shoulder bell sticks, which I'll show you again shortly. I did those last time. And these effectively are going to be um, brackets that can be mounted at any angle and then eventually screwed into place. They're actually going to be printed flat and then I'm going to bend them by heating them to match the contour of the shoulder bell so that I can fit those on properly. So I need to print um, two pairs of those, one for each side. So let's get those printing and then we'll put it all together. Okay, so I've foamed back to my pieces and stuck that chunk of foam on for mounting. And I've marked on here where that piece of foam goes and it'll be the same on the other side. I'm just gonna trim round here and peel all of the paint, Plasti Dip and PVA off so I've got an exposed foam patch. And then I can glue this piece of foam, foam to foam, with hot glue. And hopefully that'll mean that it always stays there and the paint doesn't just peel off. Yeah, so that's stuck on pretty well for a paint coat. Just goes to show how well that method works. So I've trimmed around the edge and now I should be able to peel this off. There we go, now we can glue that foam pad on straight onto the foam. So here's one of the sticks that I made last time, which bolts onto the um, whole shoulder universal joint assembly. And on each end I put these curved pieces on that have a hole in, and I made this curve so I can set things at a different angle. So the aim is that we will be gluing these onto the shoulder bell, actually going to heat these with a hot air gun and bend them and um, they're quite flexible anyway but we need to match this to the contour and we've got a large area there to glue onto the inside of the shoulder bell and then this will get hinged on that hole and there'll be a screw in there and then we can adjust this angle to get the pitch of the shoulder bell correctly and when we're finally happy with it we can either put another screw through or we can acetone weld that in place to fix it. In fact I think the angle is going to be right off the top of the curve unfortunately. I probably should have put the curve up the other way but um, nonetheless that'll work pretty well so that just needs to get heated and bent to match, match the shoulder bell. So that's the bottom of one of the shoulder bells or the inside. These um, scars here are for where I had hot glued on the cardboard that was holding them while I was um, painting and sealing them which I've now peeled off. So this, these pieces get stuck on here. We'll get an opposite one on the other side. And then I just need to bend this finger up so that it matches this piece. So obviously we've got almost a 45 degree angle there. And um, fortunately this is flat enough, we can just glue this on. We'll probably be using some Gorilla Glue for that, which sticks to almost anything. I might um, peel off some of the seal there. So I'm gluing onto foam again. Um, if it comes to it, hopefully that'll be enough to hold it. But we've also got the option of building another bracket in the middle when we finally set the angle. But I think that should hold it for now. Alright, so my bracket is now mounted in here, so this thing um, can rotate and it's just attached to one screw on the end on the pivot point and once I've decided what that angle is then I can put another screw in probably to hold it. So that's the existing mounting, so this thing can have its pitch set and that goes back up on here, so that thing just bolts on and then I can decide where I want the thing to, how I want it to be sloped basically when I've sorted out the rest of the bicep. And then we've got a big piece to come on here, which is going to be the pivot that covers this nasty bracket, which is the piece that I'll make next. So in terms of visual impact, I really want the rest of the suit to have this sort of level of detail with layered sections. And remember, there's probably still some more detail parts to be put on here that are going to be 3D printed. But I want to do that of all of the body panels all over the suit. So expect this level of detail in it and that sort of visual impact when it's finished. 
So there it is um, all mounted on. Obviously we can set the angle for that. I definitely put these things on the, the wrong way up or designed them incorrectly because this is actually off the top and it should have been across the nice arc. Uh, but there's nothing at all to stop us just fixing those in place. That should be more than strong enough. Um, when we decide what the angle is, so basically the bicep can still move under here um, without the shoulder bell rotating, but when the arm moves out, they move together, and when it moves backwards and forwards, they move together, which means that we've got lots of space to put a big pivot point on here, which is going to cover the nasty bracket, which is the next piece that I'm going to design. So I've 3D printed four of these, which are the pivot points for the shoulders. I've installed two and the other two are for the back. I did try making them larger and I made these ones, but I think they look a bit silly. So um, basically we'll stick with the smaller ones and I'll use the four of these for some other features around the back or something like that. So um, I'm pretty happy with the motion that I've got now. So I've got this kind of nice floating shoulder bell. Um, so I fixed this temporarily in position so it just misses the piece of the bicep there. So, um, as I've demonstrated before, as the arm moves out, the shoulder bell moves with it, and backwards and forwards, but as the arm rotates, the shoulder bell does not rotate with it. Although, due to all of the counterbalancing with the bungee, um, you get quite a satisfying floating kind of um, thing. So, altogether, I'm pretty happy with the range of motion there. I particularly like the way the shoulder bells move when I move my arms around. Um, Still obviously haven't got those mechatronic lower arms um, sorted yet, but I have tied them both in now with a nylon drive belt so they don't wobble. But obviously I'm going to get uh, quite a range of motion. Could be quite good for dancing in fact. But we'll see how that goes. But yeah, for now these shoulder bells seem pretty good. Um, of course there's some more inner layers to come. So there'll be some pieces um, either side of my head. The shoulder bells are quite far apart, but for now I think they're okay, at least when the arms are out, so they don't look too far out of place. Um, so yeah, pretty happy. There's some more inner and outer layers to go, which will be made in the same way as the shoulder bells. So check out the future parts for that. So the only thing I'm not totally convinced about now is the hand plates that I made before. And if you remember, these open up to allow uh, weapons and things to poke out, which I haven't got around to building yet, of course. Um, but now I've got this shoulder bell and I've got it's quite thick and it's made of this 20mm foam. The hand plate seems quite puny. The other thing I've noticed is that it's far too close to the hand. So really I need to build the whole bicep mechanism that covers the motor and all of this stuff. Um, which will fit inside the shoulder bell. And ideally it would be inside the hand plate which would be a, a big plate along that's going to continue right along the back of the hand and the arm. So I think I need to move these out a bit. Maybe two to three inches and possibly back the edges with the same 20mm foam with a gold edge on it. So it seems like a proper thick piece of armour, because at the moment that's quite thin, it's only 3mm with a 5mm foam backing. So um, I really need to build some more of the pieces to see how that works out. Um, but yes, I have noticed that these look a bit out of place now. Um, the rest of the armour is going to be largely curved. The temporary cardboard chest plate pieces will be replaced with curved pieces made in the same way as a shoulder bell. This piece will probably stay quite flat. Um, but it's going to be the only piece that's like that, which is a kind of big arm shield. So that's all I have for this video, but check out my channel for future updates on this project and other projects. And you can also follow me on my social media pages. The links are in the description to this video, including my Facebook discussion group. If you're in Southampton on the 4th and 5th of October 2014, which is this coming weekend, then check out Nerdageddon Defcon 3, which is a big sci-fi event in the city. I'm hoping to be taking my Hulkbuster down there and I'm actually exhibiting with So Make It, the Southampton Makerspace. Check out nerdageddon.co.uk for more details on that. Check out the rest of my channel for some other projects, including my partly 3D printed Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future 2, my plastic coating for EVA or Plastazote foam project, and also some footage of me dressed as Iron Man at Brighton Mini Maker Fair this year.